Miss Walsh. Hadley Hadley Ho! It's Sunday. Today's too nice of a day to pass up, so I need to step outside. It's about like noon. Yeah, we're going full pale mustard. It's the uh, summer, summer mood. I just love this shirt. It's just like, I didn't have to tailor this. It's the perfect length. It's like semi-cropped. So it just has this like nice shape to it. And it's like this like very, very light nylon cotton mix. And it has these, look at that. These two double-breasted pockets. Very nice. Um, Yeah, 51% necklace. Loving this. Uh, sunglasses. And I love this new cap. Can you see? I'm a bookworm. Cause that's this kind of channel. Um, yeah. And of course, our uh, Mubu bag. Yeah. This is it. I'm gonna step out. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Here to talk to you about, can you see that? Girl Online, a user manual by Joanna Walsh. Oh, um, I forgot to mention, I copped this little, little guy, little bookworm cap. Hannah Montana, what's her name? Hannah Michelle, I think her name is on Instagram. Um, I'll link it downstairs. Girl Online, a user manual. We'll have to say, not a user manual at all. More like something you write in your residency because you haven't found a topic to write about. Is that dragging her? I'm sorry. I just did not have a good time with this, unfortunately. Just not my cup of tea. I felt like it did dive into what it means to be a girl and the death of the girl because of the internet. I think what this book focuses a lot on is labor labor and the female body, especially when it comes to how girls don't necessarily keep diaries anymore in that a diary implies that there's some kind of privacy. But I feel like most people now put up their diaries either through tiny little TikTok logs in that it's not even really a diary entry, but more like a fleeting feeling where people in the comment section have to ask like, oh my God, what happened? What's the tea? Then they dive into it into another video. With that, and also let's say a blog or even a vlog, privacy is dead for the girl. And so she really talks about the death of the girl. I just feel like in some parts it was just way too wishy-washy and it was less of a user manual and more of just like diluted meditations that didn't necessarily answer or how to or tell a woman how she's supposed to navigate being online. I feel like a user manual presents answers and not so much questions. So in a sense, it is basically an anti-manifesto, which I think it describes itself as. Let me fact check. It says, this book is a user manual. This book is a virtual manifesto for manual workers. This book is a work of literary criticism. This book is a forum post. This book is a memoir of motherhood. False advertisement, Miss Walsh. Yeah, it just didn't provide any answers. It didn't even, I feel like, ask direct questions. It was just very wishy-washy. Although what I did find the most interesting aspect of the novel was the idea of 
the desk and sort of this spatial container of labor. A desk is, in most respects, a rectangle, a square. A computer screen, a laptop screen, is also that rectangular square. Just this idea of how all of our work is focused into this space. Yeah, just the, the work that we do on that. And the destruction of privacy is work in itself. And I thought that was the most interesting aspect of the book. Not much else to say. I, I was actually quite disappointed in this one. That was a girl online, a user manual. Quite sad. I think I just hyped myself up too much. Anywho, we are also reading from Libby, My Loan Came Up for Disorientation by Elaine. We have a- <clears throat> Um, hi. Uh, post-editing. I'm in my work office. Um, so, I did a disservice to Disorientation by Elaine Tzu Chu. So, I'm going to read the blurb. It's about a Taiwanese-American woman's coming of consciousness ignites eye-opening revelations and chaos on a college campus in an outrageously hilarious yet startling tender debut novel. Ingrid Yang is desperate to finish her dissertation on the late canonical poet Xiao Wen Chu and never read about Chinesey things again. Um, but after research, she goes through academic hell, and let me tell you, literal hell. Okay. She goes into her PhD and finds out something very shocking. I don't want to spoil it, because reading interviews definitely spoiled the book for me. I was just like, oh man, I missed out on all the fun. So I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but that's where we're at right now. We just hit the, the shock that was quote unquote spoiled for me. Yeah, it is, I don't know how to feel about it actually. I'm not having fun, but I'm also not bored. <laughs> Can anyone describe that mood in terms of reading? Uh, it feels very YA, yet, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. At first I thought the, the humor was quite cheesy, but uh, as I'm reading it, it, it's actually quite fun. So, I don't know, it's just written in like such a YA style. I don't know, okay. My big red flags or big icks for any writer, literature, if you have exclamation points or ellipses, I cannot stand that. I feel like in literature, you have to earn your right to use that. You can't just start off the novel using those things because in a sense that means you just don't know how to write. And in that sense, you haven't found the words or appropriate aesthetics to formulate those feelings without having to use exclamations or ellipses. I feel like, I don't know, if you're a writer, you should master the way those punctuations and the effects of those punctuations through words. That's your job as a writer. Anyway, that's my quip. But leading me to say that there are way too many ellipses. <laughs> I don't know what else, what was going through Elaine's head, but there's too many goddamn ellipses. And that just, I don't know, irks me in some way and I don't know why. I don't know, I just feel like it's lazy and you're not doing your job as a writer in creating words to evoke emotions so that you don't have to use punctuation like that. So that's why I feel like it is written in sort of a YA style because it's missing the maturity of a literary fiction writer. But yeah, I think it's pretty ballsy of Elaine to look at the antagonism between Asian Americans on the campus setting while also dealing with men, white men with yellow fever. I just think that is bold. I don't think I've ever read anything that deals with both of those things at the same time. And Elaine does like a really, really cool job of doing it. So major props to her for tackling that. But yeah, I I don't know. I, I do like campus reads, you know? I finished The Idiot and going into this one, I thought, oh cool, Asian American campus, that's cool. But I feel like, but I, also if anyone has suggestions to campus novels, please let me know. I'd be curious to, read more university 
settings. Excited for either or. I'm waiting for my copy to arrive. But yeah, I feel like when I read any campus novel, the only campus novel that I really enjoyed was The Secret History by Donna Tartt because dark academia and just like that Ivy League, East Coast, university, spooky, gothic, it's just it, that. It just does all that and it's a page turner. It's fun, it's riveting, it's smart, it has compelling characters, it's wild. It's a wild ride and definitely made for the screen, so can't wait for the adaptation of that. But yes, those are my thoughts on books set on university campuses. With that, I'm like quarter of the way through. I heard it gets even more wild, so I'm, I'm being patient. I'm, I'm gonna stick with it. But in terms of like physical books, I started Atella Non's Shifting the Silence. I am enjoying it very whimsical, philosophical, talking about time, the passing of time, how we should be managing it as an artist, but also as a person who just exists. And that's as far as I got, page eight. But yeah, those are, those are the reading updates. Hope everyone is well, staying cool, and staying hydrated. It is hydration nation. Don't forget to drink water. Hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate.